afternoon and welcome, hi, uh, to the Design versus Story, How Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, Address the Elephant in the Room. <laughs> I'm Marianne Hayden, um, I'm a story animator at Naughty Dog. I've been a story animator on, currently on The Last of Us Part Two and Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. I was a cinematics animator for Uncharted 1, 2, 3, and 4. I've been at Naughty Dog for about 10 years. I've worked on everything from cinematics to scripted sequences to level gameplay animations. I also jump in the suit every once in a while and get on the motion capture stage. So first, let's answer the question, what is a story animator? Uh, well, a story animator is different than a cinematics animator. We aid uh, the design team and our writers with animation ideas of how to progress character and story development during gameplay. Our goal is, in between these two images, help create high quality gameplay while combining design and story that stays true to the overall vision and narrative without becoming boring or confusing and losing sight of our end goal. We are assigned levels and responsible for all scripted sequences in those levels. Uh, when we create these sequences, the IGCs, in-game cutscenes, or POIs, points of interest, uh, this is what goes into it. We pre the scenes by blocking out animations pose to pose, try to get correct timing, including a rough camera path, and then we direct the motion capture shoots with our stunt actors. Uncharted The Lost Legacy was on such a tight deadline that most of our previs was shot on the motion capture stage before we even got animations implemented into the game. We didn't have time for traditional previs, which also meant a lot of reshoots. We made a 10 hour game in less than a year. So if that explains any of that. <laughs> then we get the data back from the stage and we assemble the Maya scenes. We use tracks for Lost Legacy and we're using Time Editor for The Last of Us 2. And we edit the clips together for correct timing. Then we work with design to get interactive moments functional in script and in game. At Naughty Dog, we don't have producers per department, so a lot of the production work that comes with these scenes is our responsibility. We communicate with our background artists, our foreground artists, effects, audio, our writers to make sure we have scripts before we go to the stage to shoot. We have to make sure we, the scene has everything that it needs. We assign the scenes to animators, review and manage the scenes up until polish until the game is locked and we're ready to ship. That's the general idea of what the role of a story animator is at Naughty Dog. And if I'm lucky, I get to keep a few animations like this one to work on from start to finish. Design at Naughty Dog often influences story, and story often influences design. Story and gameplay are developed in concert. One often does not come before the other. Naughty Dog frequently creates scripted sequences where the player has limited control and still allows to maintain a cinematic moment. And these moments in games are always more emotional and have more impact when they are on the stick and somewhat interactive, unlike cutscenes. And over the years, the seesaw has tilted back and forth from design to story and vice versa. And this can present challenges. Sometimes we have a design idea that's so unusual that um, it could support the story in a better way than a cutscene. So we find a way to incorporate into the story no matter what the complexity and the cost. The elephant ride in Uncharted The Lost Legacy is one of those moments. So just curious, how many of you have played Uncharted The Lost Legacy? Awesome, not enough hands. <laughs> After the talk, go buy it and help support my family. <laughs> so if you're unfamiliar, it's a spinoff of the Uncharted series featuring Chloe, a character from Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, and Nadine Ross, a character from Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. I'm going to play the six minute sequence that this talk is about, and then I'm going to talk about our process, what worked, what didn't work, and what some of our challenges were. So, if you don't want any spoilers, here's your chance to leave. How to ride and get on a wild elephant was one of our biggest challenges in this story beat. Oh, 
Hey, 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 it's okay. She's tripped. But I don't think she's wounded. Those explosions we heard must have triggered the collapse. Easy, girl. Shh, shh, shh. it's okay. <clears throat> Sorry, girl. We're gonna get you out. Talking to me or the elephant? Both? Easy. Easy. Easy does it. Okay, then. Where's it taking us? Wherever it wants. At this point in the story, these two characters aren't on very good terms. They really don't yeah. like each other. You want some um, of this? And, but small talk isn't their thing. And they're stuck on this yeah. elephant. You can't get off of it. And ultimately, they need to figure out a way to work together. So once they're on the elephant, there wasn't much for the player to do. We gave the player a couple opportunities uh, to feed the elephant. So if you missed that last branch, then there would be another uh, chance in the next overhang to get that. We wanted to take time to focus on our environment art in this sequence as well. So we would uh, focus the camera on things like this upcoming vista. We wanted to populate the area with monkeys that monkeys and animals, other kind of animals that might uh, be in this environment as well. One more. Good appetite. This cut scene is a bonding moment between these two characters, and it actually was written for a different part of the game. But when this story beat was created, we moved it to the back of the Look, elephant. I, um, I'm not very good at the whole people thing. You're a selfish dickhead. Yeah. You're right. I am a selfish dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> It's good to hear you say it. <laughs> well, did you hear that, Dad? Did get something from you after all. What happened with your father? He was the guy that couldn't walk away. The Ministry of Culture offered to finance one more of his expeditions. Because this time he said he was on to something big. He was always on to something big. But bandits raided his camp and um, local authorities found him weeks later. And this stupid thing is all I have left of him. I'm sorry. Oh, hey. <laughs> he certainly made his choice. So? Listen, Fraser, you don't oh. What's it doing? Charging, I think. Tell it to stop, because I speak elephant. Oh. you to sort out as well. Let's not have that stand in the way anymore, hey? Okay. Deal. Come on. Well, if we accomplished nothing else today, at least we reunited a family. Oh, just keep your distance. We've got a cough of them. Right. 
That bull will kill you. Suppose it would be a shame to come all this way and die right now here. Here, I'll take this one. Oh, okay, thanks. Move over a little. That's good. Now, reach that way and hold out your hand. What? Much safer way to pet an elephant. Much obliged. It was in this level where the elephants were originally. It's one of our biggest and most open world levels we've ever created. It's a jungle in Western Ghats, India. We created a space where exploration and interactive scenes could take place in any order. And in an earlier version of this level, this included stumbling upon an elephant pond, which was visible in the distance but not reachable by the player. The elephants were supposed to be a background element, animals in a jungle. In the far distance, they're underneath the trees in the middle. Uh, we were never supposed to ever even get close to them. And that space became this space up in the pond. And as we started playtesting it, people kept wanting to get closer and closer to the elephants. So once we playtested the space, it became clear that the player wanted to reach the, uh, the elephant pond. <laughs> so design afforded the players a chance to observe the elephants up close. Never try this at home. Once the player was allowed to get near the elephants, they wanted to pet them and feed them and ride them. So while we began exploring this idea, we lost our sense of being grounded. This is a car in the aftermath of an elephant attack. Elephants are not docile. So most people who approach a herd of elephants, let alone try and pet their calf, wouldn't come out alive. Our game director, Kurt Marganau, tweeted, this sequence exists because Almadina Soria was doing a test and put Chloe on an elephant as a joke. Then people wanted it for real. I hated it so much, my gut was, oh my God, how do we make this not dumb and silly? After many iterations, we found a way. Thank you, team, for being persistent. So my lead, Almadena, used our old horse tech from Uncharted 3 to prove that we could actually ride the elephant. Uh, we called the elephant Horton for a little while, like Horton, here's a who, because our file name from Uncharted was Horse 10. <laughs> and so once we allowed the player to ride the elephant, it seemed like there was no going back because people really loved it. It was really fun. I mean, who doesn't want to ride an elephant? Uh, and so it was at this point in design and story realized that the elephant needed a more structured and cohesive moment. So we contacted an animal, animal welfare consultant and a cultural advisor. And they suggested from the beginning that we shouldn't be able to just hop on an elephant and ride it wherever we want to. Because if we did this, that would suggest that the elephant had been trained and in turn most likely abused during that process. So for the player, riding the elephant was fun, but it was really silly. So this, making this believable was a huge challenge for us. So through collaboration between design and story, we came up with multiple layouts, some I've shown you already, and prototypes and previses of how we find the elephant and how we get on it. Once we decided we're going to ride it, this new version of this beat got moved to another level. At this point, the story was more developed, and Chloe and Nadine discovered that the antagonist of their story had caused an explosion, which in turn had trapped one elephant. This gave us the justification as to why there was one elephant and why it was trapped. But this is the original block mesh for this new location. There were three design goals that we needed to hit. Uh, unblock the path, rescue the elephant, and ride the elephant. Their justifications came after many iterations. So as I mentioned before, one of our biggest challenges was to find a grounded way of riding a wild 
elephant. Uh, here, the idea was to uh, traverse up and around, which then would ca cause the collapse of debris, which would open a path for the elephant. Uh, but we still didn't know how to get on the elephant at this point. That version wasn't working, and so we cut that layout and we tried again. Um, and it turned into Chloe and Nadine working together to release the rebel, which also opened the path for the elephant. You help the elephant, and the elephant helps you get out of the cave. You can't really see it here, but the elephant is actually kneeling down so that you can climb on the log next to the elephant and get on her. Um, and she does this because she says, thank you for clearing the path. Not pretty flawed. So this wasn't the correct solution, but we needed to get on the elephant in order for the game to progress until we figured out a better solution. In this version, Chloe and Nadine still work together to release the rubble and uh, free the animal. Same beats, but a different ending. Still have the challenge and major issue of how do we get on this elephant and make it seem as grounded as possible. In each version, there were some elements that did work and that carried, got carried over into the next version, like helping the elephant uh, by moving the rubble. And this one was slightly different than the previous but still very flawed. The previous layout wasn't working because we couldn't get on the elephant in a grounded way. It got cut and we finally landed on this version. Basic concept still there, but now the elephant is physically trapped and Chloe and Nadine have to help her and work together to uh, free the elephant. And in return, the elephant helps them by taking them to their next destination. <clears throat> other than the initial story beats of how to ride a wild elephant, there were a lot of other problems we needed to solve to make this moment work. I remember being in the meeting when riding the elephant was joked about. And I was like, well, we can't mocap an elephant. Uh, and to make a move set for one is going to take forever. We're on a really tight deadline. Uh, there was a lot of hesitation, a lot of hesitation from a lot of people, but in the end we got a lot of support from our leads. Our standard player camera didn't work once we were riding an elephant uh, and two characters were attached to her. The first few rounds had the camera either too far away from the characters or clipping through the elephant's butt. Here the camera is clipping through the head and the butt, and characters are not in an optimal position. So our design scripter for this part took two different player cameras that would blend in and out of a custom spline depending on where you were relative to the elephant. If you were in the front of the elephant, we wanted to make sure that we framed her face very well. And if we were in the back, we wanted to avoid uh, colliding with her butt. And if we were on the side, we wanted to frame Chloe and Nadine nicely. In the beginning, the player sort of drove the elephant and had total control. So we experimented with allowing the player to drive the elephant, uh, and then it made it seem like the player was riding a horse or Horton. So we, we, wanted, we wanted more control over what moments forced, we forced the player to look at, and we lost that control when we gave more control to the player. So eventually, Full player control of the elephant got cut. And in the final version, there's minimal control. For instance, if the path split, like one went to the right of that rock and one went to the left of that rock, we had two splines. You could choose which one to go on, but that was pretty much the only choice you had. So once we got the elephant on a spline, getting her to move on the spline, similarly to a ride car, fluidly was also difficult. It was pretty clunky because the elephant was reacting to the background collision over this very rough terrain. So eventually the collision was flattened out and smoothed out um, and the background geo was not. Monkeys, rocket launchers, and rifles were problems. So transitioning from the elephant ride into the cut scene on the elephant also proved difficult. The monkey moment doesn't last too long, but it took a really long time to figure out what that transition would be into the cutscene. Uh, background needed to be adjusted for this section of the ride so we could see a nice silhouette of the tree and the monkeys climbing it. 
then the idea started, we didn't have the background to support this, and the idea started where there was a rock in the middle of the path, and I just started placing foreground branches everywhere. I was like, oh, the monkeys could go up here, I guess. And then that translated into the background creating uh, the elements that we needed for where the monkeys ended up climbing. We needed a way to guide the player's eyes up uh, so that would motivate uh, the, the cut for the, the cut scene. So we had to constrain the camera at the end of player control so that it was facing the right direction for the first shot of the cinematic. This transition started with leaves falling, which helped to guide the player's eyes up. And then we slowly started to constrain the camera to look up at the monkeys. And that, like I said, motivated the camera cut. Normal gameplay allows for you to shoot your weapon, but you can't be, have your weapon enabled when you're not an elephant, otherwise everybody would be trying to shoot elephants. So it was disabled in this section, but that was the first level that the elephants were in. And when it got moved to another level, the scripter changed with it. And so we had a lot of, you know, back and forth, like, oh, wait, wait, where is that in script? Can we turn that off again, please? <clears throat> so we had to give the player some interactions during this very quiet ride. You're with a character who doesn't want to talk to you, and you can't get off. You're stuck on this elephant. So the player could choose to feed the elephant, them three times if they pleased or not. You, you could grab the branch or you could not grab the branch and you had um, three pieces of fruit on this branch that could be fed to the elephant. Rifles. The first shot of the cinematic, we hid Chloe's rifle. It kept clipping through Chloe's shoulder and the elephant's back, causing it to be very distracting to have it visible. But we give it back to you at the end of the sequence once they stand up out of the water. Some actor choices in the cinematic proved visually unappealing. This cutscene was emotional and the standalone results were great, but once placed on a hairy elephant, it looked like Chloe was resting on a big hairy butt. <laughs> so not very pretty to look at. So this version was cut and we reshot it with direct, given, given direction to our actor not to take that position. How do we land in an elephant pond as fluidly as possible? Uh, elephants don't jump into things. So design, but design needed a way to valve the player once we were in the pond. And for a really long time, this cliff uh, was really high and the pond was really shallow. So it took a while, but eventually we made the cliff really low and the pond really deep. Plus, uh, tighter, more cinematic cameras also helped uh, in the final version. What interactions can we have once we're in the pond? You know, people love petting animals, especially baby animals in life and in games. And in the beginning, we gave you the option to pet the baby. <gasps> I could pet this baby elephant. That is so cute. So ultimately, this was too silly and not grounded enough to keep in the game. So, I mean, of course we can allow you to pet a baby elephant, but is a herd of wild elephants going to let you pet their baby? I don't think so. So unfortunately, the baby elephant was not an option, and that had to get cut. Uh, the feedback we kept getting, though, was like everybody still wanted to pet the elephant. So we added the ability to pet the elephant in the beginning of the sequence while you're riding her. And if you attempted to pet the elephants, the bull warns you to stay away. <clears throat> we didn't give many other choices uh, for interacts. Uh, you either attempt to pet the bull. Um, we, we also wanted the player to continue on. So by the time you arrive at the pond, since this beat was essentially over, uh, we wanted you to keep going. But this was the last interaction that we allowed. Uh, it was a picture to be taken and stored on Chloe's phone so you can look at it later. And it's a nice keepsake for the end of the moment. Take time to explore options within design and story. 
If you take anything away from this talk, it doesn't matter how big or small your project may be. Moments like this take a lot of trial and error. And test them and get feedback. Add to them and then make them the, and then make them the best moments possible. And if something isn't working, try it again in a different way. Or try it again in another way. And if it still isn't working, then just cut it and move on. A cute, whimsical, or silly idea like riding a wild elephant might get easily dismissed before it's tried. So we continued to try a lot of different versions and, and had different ideas of how we could make this elephant a bigger part of this game, mostly because people really liked the idea and it was fun and it was different. It was also a fun challenge to solve. With each version, we got closer and closer. Uh, we were never supposed to even get close to these elephants. They were supposed to be a background animal. So you just saw the development process of how this background beat became a quiet, peaceful moment in a high-paced action-adventure game. So like this moment, small background beat always has potential for more development. Of course, there were many more issues we encountered during this sequence, but I only have 30 minutes. Uh, and this sequence wouldn't have been possible without everyone at Naughty Dog who worked on this level. Beyond design, story, and animation, there's of course our actors, Laura Bailey and Claudia Black, our stunt actors, our character designers, TDs, audio engineers, programmers, background artists, effects artists, production team, QA, focus testers. Thank you to our creative uh, writer, our creative director and our writer, Sean Sky, co-writer, Josh Scher, game director, Kurt Marganau, lead designer, James Cooper, level designer, Michael Barclay, design scripter, Felix Park, and lead animator, Almadina Soria. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your time at GDC.